What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be doing the makeup I used to be obsessed with retested video. I've seen this video go around for a little bit now and it's been named a million different things. But basically what we're doing today is sitting down and testing some of my old, old, old favorites. I'm talking like years ago favorites and I just want to see if they perform the same and if they're as good as I used to think they were if I'm still obsessed with them if I still love them probably half the products I have sitting in front of me here are hella expired and need to go in the garbage can but I'm I'm a makeup hoarder like I'm such a hoarder I can't I can't part with things I know it's a problem I need to get rid of makeup but I'm just I'm a hoarder and this is like taking a walk down memory lane it's gonna be so nostalgic I'm so excited for this but a disclaimer makeup does expire do not do this do not don't kids don't do this at home usually you can tell it goes bad by the way it smells but a lot of people don't actually know this. All makeup has an expiration date and you can usually find the expiration date on the back of your products. There will be like a little jar right there with a number in it. Like this one says 12 months. Full disclosure, I've had this so much longer than 12 months. I'm not joking. So the majority of my products here are literally like the originals. I don't think I've repurchased like more than half maybe but like i said a lot of it does hold sentimental value these are some of the first products that i really learned how to do my makeup with and like experiment without further ado let's see if i still love these products all right so we are starting with our base today and for primer i used primer back in the day like that's a big deal for me i had no idea what i was doing but like i was using primer so i was kind of a big deal so this is the tarte poreless clean slate primer this is the 12 hour perfecting primer i remember when i got this i actually got this at ulta and you can see how much has been used this is what it looks like it really reminds me of like the smashbox 24 hour like the clear one this smells not great. It has a very silicone-y texture, um, and I'm just going to pat this into my T-zone, and that's really probably the only place I'm gonna, oh my God, this is disgusting. <laughs> I don't really care for silicone-y primers anymore. I think Tarte was one of the first like high-end makeup brands that I ever owned. I got like an eyeshadow palette set, like a kit kind of thing, for my birthday one year and I had no idea what it was and I just used and abused it. It hit me like, this is Tarte Cosmetics, like take better care of your shit. But I remember distinctly, it had like a turquoise eyeshadow in it and I was like all over my face. I need a turquoise eyeshadow all over my face. So that actually sinks into the skin pretty good. It doesn't like sit on your skin too much and it doesn't ball up, which is really, really nice. But I would say I do like my, wait, shut the front door. I was just gonna say, I think my Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer has definitely replaced this. It's the same primer. Pore Refining Waterproof Line Filling. This is literally the same thing. This just has a different texture though. Like this is more like mattifying to me and not as greasy. So I think that new and improved formula is definitely good. So that probably means they don't even make this shit anymore. That needs to go in the garbage can. So next we are going in with foundation and I have the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. This is what it looks like. My first encounter with this product was prom my junior year of high school. This was the foundation I used for prom. Not, not this exact bottle because that's where I draw the line. That's like kind of gross. But I remember my mom used to use this. So I remember I was doing my makeup and my foundation shade didn't match me because it was summer and I was like super tan and it was too pale. So my mom gave me a little bit of her double wear and you couldn't see anything on my skin. I was obsessed with it. And then all the beauty gurus were using it. It was just, this was the shit back in the day. So I'm just taking this on a beauty blender. I used to use this with a brush, but I'm intrigued to see if I would like it with a beauty blender because that's how I do my makeup now. This does not smell great. I think this is expired too. I haven't had this that long though. Maybe like a year? 24 months. That's two years. This is not expired. Maybe it just smells like paint. I don't remember. The scent of this kind of reminds me of like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. It smells a little bit like paint thinner. Why do all the good products smell like trash? Like seriously. Wait, you guys, <laughs> this is so good. Why do I not use this anymore? And this color match is actually like perfect for me. Wow, I'm obsessed with this. This, this. My earring just fell out. 
This is a damn good foundation. This covers everything and it dries to that like powder, satiny, matte finish. I am, I am all for it. I'm into this. All right, moving into concealer. <laughs> I have the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I mean, who didn't use this? So I have two. I used to think I was super fancy because I had like the peachy brightening one. So I don't know how old these are. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just going to take a little bit of the brightening one and apply. Ooh, I forgot the sponge was so squishy. And then I have this regular one in the shade Fair. Oh my God, the sponge applicator, I can't get over it. This color is way too light for me. I used to not wear concealer, like let's talk about that. I used to wear just like straight foundation powder. I would wear, yes, powder foundation. I didn't even wear liquid foundation that much. And then I remember I had the Clinique. Oh my God, yeah, the Clinique powder foundation. And I used to just like slap that on with the little puffer that it came with. <laughs> Can you imagine? I used to be ready in like 10 minutes. Now it's like 10 hours. This is blending out really nicely. That was like hella brightening though. I could have done without the peachy shade. This is nice, but it's not Tarte Shape Tape. Or my Huda Beauty concealer. Um, this is just not full coverage enough for me, but it's blending into my foundation really, really nicely. And I mean, it looks good. It's just not full coverage enough for me. This I would probably go back to using for like my no makeup makeup days but I can't ever imagine using this with like a full on smoky eye. Moving right along into powder. This I already know I'm obsessed with. This is the Cody Airspun. Oh, that scent, <sighs> that powder fresh. Mm, it's horrible, but this powder is so good. So I've been using this powder for so stinking long. Somehow this, this powder doesn't die. Like it will forever be in my collection. It comes back. Okay, first of all, this whole container is like six bucks and this lasts me like years. I'm not joking. I think I've repurchased this powder maybe like once in my life. It's so good. It just gives such a good blurring effect. It's perfect for baking. It's perfect for setting. This doesn't make you dry or cakey. It just makes you look so airbrushed and smooth. But I do not use this all over my face anymore. I used to. I was a matte queen but now I just set my under eyes and kind of my T-zone with this, but we are gonna set the whole face. This is the Milani Powder Foundation in Natural Tan. This is the Even Touch. I would go with whatever liquid foundation I was wearing and throw a powder foundation on top for extra coverage. Why not just buy a more full coverage liquid foundation? I do not know, but I use this to set and for added coverage, and I used to go like ham with this stuff. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. It is a really nice powder. I would be interested to try this like without a liquid underneath, like just using this on bare skin. I mean, I just look so matte. It is super, super full coverage. This is a great powder. I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all. I just, the amount I would slap on my face before I understood that in some cases, like less is more is just mind blowing to me. But I mean, I look so airbrushed and like this looks really good. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is my second one of these. I had this when it was like in the old packaging. This is the newer packaging. But as you can see, it's so disgusting and janky. I've had this for years, but you know, does powder expire? 24 months, two years. I've definitely had this longer than two years, but it doesn't stink or anything. So I feel like it's still fine to use. Now it is time to bronze because you know, I wasn't contouring. This was my obsession. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. I hit pan. This is my second one of these and it's still the old packaging. I still think these are great powders. Like there's a reason why people are still using them. They're such a good, just nice tone. This is a good like bronzer and contour shade in one. I remember, oh my God, I remember being like a poor college student and my sister for some reason had more money than me, which is confusing because our parents never gave us any sort of like money for makeup. Like everything we wanted to buy, we had to work for, which I mean, that's normal. But I remember my sister was at the store and she was calling me and she's like, oh my God, Lauren, like I need a new bronzer. What bronzer do I get? And I was like, oh my God, you have to get Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. It's so good. Everyone's using it. And I remember I was so pissed because she came home with it. And I was like, I'm giving you all these recommendations that I can't even afford and you're ending up with all the good makeup. I use the shitty products, even though I know more about makeup and you have all the good stuff you don't even know how to use. But I just remember being like so bitter and envious and just being like, how do you afford that? Like, 
30 bucks for a bronzer was expen- I mean, it still is expensive. That was like my life savings right there. It's just so good. It's pigmented. It blends well. Like Too Faced just hit it spot on with this. And I think that I should get one in the new packaging. That's probably not like old and expired, but this is forever gonna be a great bronzer to me. All right, moving right along to blush. I'm so embarrassed to show this. First of all, this is a cream blush. This is the Dandelion Dew by Benefit. Okay, the lid is cracked. This thing is like broken. I'm pretty sure this was my mom's first and then got like handed down to me. The color is very pink. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's very chunky and like disgusting. This product is so old to the point where I like actually don't want to put it on my face. This is, I'm actually not going to put this one on my face, but <laughs> good news for you. I do have the powder version. I have a little mini of this. So this is just like a super light pink. This isn't even gonna show up on me. I mean, it's really pretty. Um, it's a nice matte blush. Benefit makes really good blushes, but <laughs> This isn't showing up on my skin tone. This one is for sure going in the trash and we'll keep this one. <laughs> so I just went ahead and filled in my eyebrows off camera because I'm so ashamed to admit this, but back in the day, I was not filling in my eyebrows. I didn't have anything to test out for you guys, but that is unacceptable. I need eyebrows, so I just filled those in off camera. So now I want to move on to our eye makeup. And this is where it like really gets nostalgic for me. So. <laughs> You know how like back in the day, everyone was like, oh my God, Urban Decay Naked, like first real palette. Well, like I have Urban Decay Naked, but that came like later for me. My first like OG palettes were, this is so cringe. These are disgusting. My first palettes were the Lorac Pro palettes. I was obsessed with these. Like I'm pretty sure that I didn't even, no, I didn't even get these at Ulta. I remember I got these at Kohl's, like the department store at Kohl's. And I was so broke that I was literally using my mom's like Kohl's cash to like save money on these and buy these. So while everyone was out there using their Urban Decay Naked, I was using my good old Lorac Pro. And then came the Lorac Pro number two. Hang on to your britches because this is where it got interesting. Then I got the Mega Pro too. This was huge. Didn't even get the first one, skipped right to the second one because I was like, this gives me such variety. The colors in here, I can do so much. Like, bitch, you were not using blue eyeshadow. Like, you don't even know what to do with that. But I had to have this. I bought this completely on my own. I remember I was in college and I sent a picture to all my friends. I thought I was the bee's knees. And these are so old and like janky. But like I said, I will never get rid of these because these are like the start to my obsession with makeup and like how I learned to do makeup. Like playing around with these palettes is like what taught me how to do a cut crease, how to do a smoky eye, blend out eyeshadow. And then came the Pro 3. My mom and dad got me this for Christmas one year. I remember that was like a huge deal to me. I was so excited. I had been begging for this and that's pretty much it. That's all I had. <laughs> that's all I had for eyeshadow palettes. But like I was a pretty simple gal back in the day. I did not have variety in my makeup. Like I had one foundation, one concealer. That's really all I used. So when I had like a whole palette of eyeshadows to play with, that was like a huge deal to me. So I've done like just full disclosure. <laughs> I've done so many people's makeup with this. Like I was doing people's makeup like in high school. I was doing Halloween makeup with this formal prom homecoming. And when we got to college, I was doing like sorority functions, Halloween again. Like I can't tell you how many people I've used this palette on. And that was before I knew how to sanitize things or actually like clean things after you use them on people. So that's so disgusting. I hate myself for that. Thank God nobody got an eye infection or anything wild like that. But I mean, this was literally like all I had. So I made it work. Um, as you can tell, taupe was my transition shade that I could not get away from. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So I'm just a Applying a little bit of this in my crease area. This is obviously not going to be a full tutorial. Why is that going on so gray? Like it's taupe, it's like this brownish color and it's coming off really gray. People complain that these don't blend well. I think they blend really well. I remember I loved Sable so much because it reminded me of MAC Swiss Chocolate, I think it was called, the single eyeshadow. And MAC was like, so far out of my realm. Like there was no way that I was affording Mac, like absolutely no shot whatsoever. But I was like, oh, it's a dupe. Like back in the day, I was the queen of finding dupes because I was such a poor college kid. Like I could not afford 
a single eyeshadow for $12. Like that's kind of expensive to make a whole palette. So I remember that I was like on the hunt for dupes at all times. Like I was always on the hunt for the cheapest makeup because that's when I kind of started like branching out and I wanted more variety. So I was like, the only way I can like get a big collection is if it's like really freaking cheap. So I was always buying Wet n Wild, NYC. Oh my God, NYC, do they even make that anymore? I haven't seen that like anywhere. Um, those were like my two go-to brands. And then I started branching out into NYX a little bit, but I was always looking at drugstore makeup. I really didn't get high-end makeup until like I started my senior year in college or like graduating. So I wanna take a little bit of this color here, Chrome. Oh my God, I used to love this shade and I'm just gonna put this all over my eyelid. That is not pigmented at all. Okay, these shimmers are like so dull to me. I mean, they're like the pigment is there, but these are not like pretty shimmers to me anymore. So I'm gonna go into Nude here and I'm just gonna pop this in my inner corner. Ooh, that one's bright, that one's pretty. This was always my highlight shade. Okay, so for eyeliner, I can't even tell you what this is because it's so old. I actually, mm, I should not use this on my waterline. This is my first drugstore eyeliner, some like nasty Rimmel like black eyeliner. But then I learned black eyeliner is not suitable for every occasion. So the second one I got was this Urban Decay mushroom one. This is not the original, I promise. So I'm just applying this like a little bit in the outer corner, just to smoke it out a little bit. All right, let's move on to mascara. So this is the Tarte Tardis Lash Paint. I can't really remember like my first, first, ma actually my first mascara that I ever used was like the Colossal in the yellow tube with like the purple writing on it but this is the oldest mascara I can remember. This is not like the first tube I ever owned because that would be disgusting and I do have some dignity. Actually, ooh, pause. So I wanna do my makeup kind of like I did back in the day. I want this to be like a little bit authentic. So I'm gonna go in with lashes first because that's what I did. I put on my eyelashes and then applied mascara. These are the Ardell 110 false eyelashes. Look at these bad boys. Oh, they're horrible. I hate them. What is what is the point of wearing this eyelash? Like to me, this adds absolutely nothing. But this is what I wore back in the day. So we gotta be as real as possible. Do I gotta trim these? I used to not trim these. These are the most spindly, disgusting eyelashes ever. I hate them. Okay, now it is time to apply our mascara. So like I said, this is the Tardis Lash Paint. Look at how spiky that brush is. It's so natural. I used to tell people these were my natural eyelashes. Come on. Mm, it's okay for the bottom lashes. It's fine if you're putting like false lashes on, um, but I don't like this as just like my regular mascara, like no false eyelashes. The brush almost like hurts my eyes. It's so spiky, like. All right, let us move on to highlight. Oh my God, there's eyelashes stuck to this. I used to be obsessed with this. This was Wet n Wild Boozy Brunch. I think I bought this because Casey Holmes told me to buy it. Well, she didn't tell me like specifically, but she was like, oh my God, you need this. So I was like, <laughs> she told me to buy it. I'm gonna go buy it. It looks so scary, but this is actually like a really pretty like golden highlight. It, it It's a really, really nice highlight. It's a very soft powder and it blends really, really well. And then I also had Becca Moonstone. This was my first high-end highlighter. Everybody remembers. I want to see how this looks because I am such a highlighter junkie these days. I like that wet, like dewy, glistening, metallic highlight, like so intense. This to me is like a natural highlight now. <laughs> Isn't that so sad? Like it is pretty. Um, this color is too light for me, but I mean, I like it. It's nice. I wanted to use it because it's kind of cooler toned. Instead of using the Wet n Wild one, it doesn't really go with the look that we're doing today. All right, you guys, it is time to move on to lip products and then we are done with this madness. So for my lipstick today, I'm going to be using this Wet n Wild matte lipstick. And this is in the shade 902C Bear It All. And I bought this because if you remember, I said I was the queen of dupes back in the day. And this was known to be a dupe for Velvet Teddy. And this was during the time where Velvet Teddy was like 
it. Like if you didn't have Velvet Teddy, you like, you don't know shit. So I bought this because I wanted to be cool and I wanted to be able to tell people <laughs> when they asked what lip color I was wearing, I wanted to be like Velvet Teddy. Like I was not wearing Velvet Teddy, I was wearing this, but whatever. Since then, I have purchased Velvet Teddy, so like don't think if you were one of those people that was asking me like, what's your lip color? And I said Velvet Teddy. Like I didn't actually lie to your face. I do own Velvet Teddy and wear it frequently. But I love this matte lipstick so much that I went and bought the entire collection. <laughs> like I'm not kidding. I bought every single matte lipstick like this that went in Wild Made. And some of the colors are truly outrageous and kind of atrocious on me, but I still had to have them. But if you can see, this is so <laughs> disgusting. Like, but before we apply that I did at some point learn how to use a lip liner for the longest time I did not wear lip liners sometimes I still don't wear lip liner this was one of the first ones that I got and this is the Rimmel exaggerate full color lip liner I'm going to go in with the shade epic but I remember I used to love these because they were really thin I could get a really precise line and they were super creamy oh f I broke it so I actually don't hate how this came out. It could be better, but it could also be worse. Overall, this video was so fun for me to sit down and film. I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. I had a lovely stroll down memory lane. I'm feeling very nostalgic, and I'm also feeling like I really need to clean out my makeup collection. All of this stuff could probably take a nice trip to the dumpster, but if I didn't have all these products, and if I didn't save all of these, then like I would not be able to do this video, so. You're welcome. In all seriousness though, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this, something a little bit entertaining, a little bit different for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe if you have not already. I would love for you to join my little family here. And until next time, bye. Can't stop staring at those oceans.